Here I am continuing the communion video I was doing here, part two. And we just went over how it's literal and spiritual, it's not just symbolic, it's not just in remembrance. And I was going over Genesis 40, how in the dream, it's the baked meats, the bread, but in the real world, it's the flesh. And then I was talking about how the butler, you see he's restored in the real world to the right hand, but also we see it's a literal cup. And that in the dream, it was the vine, or he's taking the grapes off. And I said, but that doesn't really, you know, when I was talking about the bread, and the real world, it's the literal flesh. But then I remembered that the Old Testament actually does teach what I was saying here about communion. How could I have forgotten Genesis 49, which proves again that it's... His literal blood. Let's go here. Again, read off yourself, King James Bible. Just because I'm using the scriptures in this recording does not mean I'm trying to add, remove, change, or even for record for posterity any part of the scriptures. Read them all for yourself. Consider it a paraphrase. Here we are. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's well. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass col as his colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Again, the Old Testament reveals wine is called what blood foretelling jesus christ again the garments here washed what in blood when jesus christ comes again right it's washed it says the word of god right basically on his garments and we see these dipped so again genesis 40 Spiritual bread is his literal flesh, as we see in John 6. Again, Jesus Christ tells you, John 6, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eats this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Again, Jesus Christ tells you what the bread from heaven is. The spiritual bread is his literal flesh that he gave up for you. And I'm going to go to this verse because they use it to attack... Uh, the communion of the Lord, the body and the blood. Let's go to it here, which this verse proves it more than I can even, I mean, this proves it even more. Let's look at the same chapter. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Notice what he's saying here. See, they'll use this and say, see, They'll ignore all the verses we went through where it shows us the body and the blood, the communion of the body and the blood. You can't eat it unworthily or you'll be guilty of the body and the blood. You can't discern the body and the blood and you're guilty. Um, all these different verses, including in Genesis, Genesis 40 is so powerful. Because you see in this dream and then the real world, what? It's his flesh. Again, but look here. They'll try and use this to say, well, the flesh probably nothing is just the words. So it's not really his body and blood. But I'm going to use this verse to prove that it is literally the body and the blood. But the biggest um, argument comes from, well, if it is the literal body and blood, that it becomes a communion. Does that mean you can't be saved without partaking in communion? Because that would be adding... So all these chapters, including John chapter 6, it says just believe on him and be saved, right? Obviously, if there's somebody, tra I think everyone, most of the denomination, most of the Christians I know, or at least hear about, I think they would understand if somebody's stuck on a desert island with no priest to give him communion, and he called upon the Lord Jesus Christ, like it says in Romans 10, and believed on him, he would be saved, right? Without taking communion. So that would create what we call, you know, that would say, well, that proves it's just symbolic is what the other side would say. And the other side will say, 
Well, then, they could say either he's going to hell, which we know is not true, because the Roman, again, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. It's not of works, the same man should boast. Or, they could say, well, it was a special circumstance, he was stuck on a desert island. But no, again, both sides are missing here. What are they missing? His flesh is meat indeed, his blood is drink indeed. Whose? Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? What does it say here? The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So what's the connection that you can be saved without taking a priestly communion, but that the communion is still literally turned into his body and blood? How can this be? Let's go. It's very obvious. Let's go to the same book. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And in was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh in the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Again, Jesus Christ is the living Word, that He was made flesh and dwelt among us. Do you understand now? Do you understand? They're skipping this important part here. Yes, you can be saved calling on the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? He gave up his body and blood for you on the cross already. And you're believing on him. He is the living word. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit in their life. So again, there's no contradiction here. Do you believe the word literally became flesh and he walked among us? Yes. So when he tells you, hey, this is his body and this is his blood, it's not hard for you to believe it, right? Blessed are those who believe without seeing, just because you don't see the transformation doesn't mean it's not happening. Faith is the evidence of things unseen, the substance of things hoped for, to paraphrase. So again, this is the part they're missing to connect here. So yes, communion does become the literal body and blood, spiritual and literal. It's not just symbolic, it's not just a remembrance. But yes, you can be saved without a priest giving you communion. Why? Because, my friends, the Word is what was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ, the living Word, the flesh He's given you is the Word of God. Think about that. They try and separate him. No. He that cometh to him shall never hunger, and he that believeth on him will never thirst. You understand? So it's not a contradiction. They go together. It can be literal, and yes, you can be saved without having to have a priest nearby to give you all these communion and other things. Right? So both sides will be mad at me after this video, right? <laughs> But it's very clear, the word became, and you say, I'm going to keep going with another example. If only I had an example where, because they don't like to talk about literal. Oh, well, there are so many spiritual examples, but clearly this isn't it. When he's telling you verily, verily, and he's foretelling in Genesis 40, and he literally gave up his body and blood for you on the cross, and he literally had a bodily resurrection, and he literally tells you it's a cup of blessing, the cup of his blood, the cup of the New Testament. There's no way to believe these things are just remembrances or just symbolic. But let's go further. I'm going to give you some examples of super literal things just to prove 
Now this isn't just something we're making up here. Let's go to the Old Testament. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. And this is going to prove, I think, give you an illustration that I'm not just making up things. Well, we went through enough verses for that, but I'm going to go even further with Ezekiel 2. Read it off yourself and start at verse number 8. But thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written, within and without. And there was written therein, lamentations and mourning and woe. Chapter 3, let's go. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll. And go speak unto the house of Israel, so I open my mouth. And he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. Again, here's a literal example of what I'm talking about. Ezekiel gets a roll with the words of God written on it to prophesy and God has him literally eat the roll. Do you understand? He's literally eating the word. Literally. And this is a second witness. If you go to Revelation 10, and I'm not going to go there, just consider a paraphrase, where John is given a scroll and he literally eats it. Isn't that interesting? God puts these literal examples in here. I wonder why. Because they're going to attack you eating the body and the blood, you eating the words, you eating the word of God, Jesus Christ's body and blood. You're eating the body and blood. You're becoming part of the body of Christ. You're saved when he gave his body and blood for you on the cross, literally, not symbolically, not metaphorically, and he rose again a bodily resurrection. Not symbolically, not just spiritually, spiritually and literally. The bodily resurrection. He gave his blood for you. He gave his body for you. We have all these examples but because they don't see the wine become blood in their hand, they don't see the bread become flesh, they don't believe it. Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are, were seen, are seen were not made of things which do appear. Again, the evidence of things not seen. Let's end it here. John 20. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hands into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Again, Thomas did not see, and he, did not, he was stubborn, even though he had seen all these things and heard the scriptures, right? And when he had seen, he believed. And he says, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Again, faith, the evidence of things not seen. Because you don't see the wine transform into the blood. And you don't see the bread transform into the flesh. You have faith. 
and what God has said in His Word. Jesus Christ is the living Word. You believe on Him and you're saved because He already gave His body and His blood for you on the cross and rose again. He's already given you the body and the blood, right? When you call on Him. And you're saved. So yes, partaking communion, you're communicating with the Lord, the body and the blood. You're part of the body of Christ. It's a literal and spiritual thing. Not just a symbolic thing. Not just, it's a literal and symbolic thing. Meaning, and it's literally his body and his blood. The bread, the spiritual bread, the literal body. The cup of blessing, the cup of the New Testament and his blood. Again, it's pretty simple. But because they don't like certain churches, they just want to just say it's just remembrance. Or it's just symbolic or something. It doesn't matter what church you're going to go to if you're using, if you're following Jesus Christ, you should be able to use the same Bible. And if you come out with the same doctrine, that doesn't mean you have to leave your church right away, right? Unless they're teaching heresy or something. Again, just because you don't like one particular church, you do not ignore the scriptures. So, yes, it is literal and spiritual. The literal body and blood, the spiritual bread is his literal flesh. The wine, the blood of grapes, is his literal blood that he gave up for you on the cross and rose again. The cup of the New Testament. And we see all that here. He, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So yes, call on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Even if there's not someone nearby for a priest. Right? To give you communion and all these things. Because Jesus Christ gave it to you on the cross. His body and His blood. When you take communion, it's literally His body and His blood. You're showing the Lord's death until He comes. Again, if it was symbolic, how would you be showing the Lord's death until He comes? And it's that cup of blessing that we bless. And it's the cup of the blood of the New Testament. It's very clear with all these scriptures, right? Anyway, I hope I made that clear. So yes, when you partake of communion, it's the communion of the body and blood of Christ. And yes, you can be saved. Just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Because he already gave his body and blood for you on the cross. And you're believing on him. He's given you his word. The word became flesh, right? Jesus Christ is the living word. You're, you're already calling on him. You're already receiving him. You're already believing on him. He's already given his body and his blood, right? But this communion is still literal. Does that make sense? I hope that I made sense when I connected the scriptures. I tried to get it in a certain order. But we proved over and over and over again that it's not just symbolic from the time that, hey, you're guilty if you take it unworthily. Hey, it's a cup of blessing, but you have to bless it first because there's a change there. To, hey, it's the cup of his blood, that cup of the New Testament. Right? And that's why you have to drink all of it. You don't leave any behind for stores for normal wine. And that even in the Old Testament, it's setting up in the dream, the bread, and the literal world, it's the guy's flesh. Again, spiritual bread, literal flesh, the bread that he gives is his flesh. So you believe on him, you call on him, he's already given you the body and the blood on the cross. You believe on him. And that he rose again. He is the, a bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I shall be saved. And you take communion to show the Lord's death until he comes. And remembrance for him. But it does become the body and the blood literally. I hope that I explained clearly with the scriptures what I believe. And that we should not take these things lightly and let them just say it's in remembrance or symbolic. That is way too weak what's going on here again jesus loves you thank you for watching again i know you're going to want to reprove me with scriptures put them in the comments i don't again i went over a lot of scriptures so you're going to have to try very hard if you want me to reprove me with scriptures because i went over a lot even the old testament but thanks for listening god bless you and keep you and call upon the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved it's a free gift 
You can get saved right now. Call upon him. Be saved. Believe on him. And then afterward, you know, remember that you're taking communion seriously. You're in communication with the Lord. You're in communication with the Lord, right? That does not mean you need a priest to give you communion to be saved. I'm not trying to add things to salvation here. That's where the confusion is coming in. Because they don't understand that the word became flesh. He gave your body and the blood on the cross and rose again. They're getting those two things all mixed up. That's why they're trying to make it just symbolic. No. The word became flesh. So you believe on him. He's already given you his body and blood on the, crowd, on the cross. He rose again already. Body resurrection. You're getting his word. You're believing on him. His word is Jesus is the living word. Right? So you come to him, you believe on him, you don't hunger and you don't thirst. You've already gotten the body and the blood. But in communion, it's still literal. Does that make sense? I'm rambling now. <laughs> the point is, call upon the Lord Jesus Christ and shall be saved. Don't take communion lightly. You're communicating with the Lord. And you can still be saved if you don't have someone there to give you communion. Because he's already given you the body and the blood on the cross and rose again. But it is literally his body and blood. God bless you all and keep you. Thanks for watching. Amen. And God bless us. I almost forgot. Uh, God bless us everyone. Amen. That's what I meant.